Right guys, let's talk the I, okay? So, remember how this fits into the bigger story. Try not to think of it as any different thing. We've already talked about the idea that in order for the nervous system to really function, to make appropriate responses, it needs to be able to sense the environment. Okay, and once, once it has detected, so you know, eye is one sensor, there are various other types of sensors. You've got cells in the body that can detect temperature, um, pressure, touch sensitivity, that kind of thing, uh, sensing of chemicals, pH, those kind of things. The eye is just an organ highly evolved, adapted to be able to sense, detect light, that's all. Okay, and remember how this fits into the whole nervous system, re, uh, you know, responding to the environment idea. You need a sensor to detect that environmental stimu stimulus so that the information about that environmental stimulus can be used uh, or can be used to generate impulses in the sensory neuron. Sensory neurons' job is to transmit that information via impulses to the central nervous system, brain, for example, for processing, and then the information is going to go from the central nervous system out to via the effector neurons to an effector, which is effectively making a response. Okay, so we're going to look at how essentially you know the, the the reception of light by the eye is the story of the sensor and the sensory neuron. That's it. Okay, so in the eye you have the lens, you have the uh, the iris uh, leaving that uh, gap, which is the pupil, and the light coming in. This is going to be a very rough diagram. Is going to be focused onto the area. At at the back of the eye called the retina, where there's a high concentration of light receptor cells. Those, each of those cells is hooked or, or synapses with um, processes from the sensory neuron, okay? And the sensory neuron then bundles, or the sensory neurons bundle together, forming the, in this case, optic optic nerve and its action potentials caused by re reception of light will be moving down these optic nerves towards the brain where that those impulses will be processed and our interpretation of what those impulses mean will be perceiving images but that will be happening here okay uh, after proper processing of that and we're going to come back to that when we look at visual development and how the brain is involved in this story as well okay <clears throat> so what is going on here is the question actually not so much all of that only that okay so when that light hits the retina what happens to generate impulses in these optic nerve uh, cells which are taking the information to the brain for processing allowing us to interpret that information as an image okay so I'm just gonna draw out the connections between so essentially essentially what it is is we have the rod cell embedded in uh, the eye if you will okay um, embedded into that structure and that synapses with a bipolar cell so we've got the rod cell synapsing with the bipolar cell which itself is synapsing with the dendrites of the sensory neuron ok 
Okay, so that's just one uh, connection. You've got many rod cells which are hooked up to bipolar cells, which are themselves hooked up to uh, other sensory cell, uh, other sensory neurons. These will all bundle together, forming the optic nerve, which exits the eye and um, goes to the to the brain. Okay, to the visual center in the brain, synapsing with those neurons in the brain where we interpret those signals as an image. Um, right, so really, the next part of the story is what is going on here. We've accepted that the light is coming down here. Yes, the light does go through the sensory neurons. It does go through the bipolar cells. It does go through most of the rod cells and only stops when it hits the pigment pigment containing sacs in the rod cell okay remember your basic science that if something is not going to absorb the light then the light is just going to go through it okay um, so there's no pigments in the sensory neuron there's no pigments in the bipolar cell there's not much pigmentation in this part of the rod cell, so what would stop the light from reaching that? Don't ask me why this arrangement is the way it is. I don't know the answer to that. Um, but at this point, um, with the exam a few days away, um, I'm sure we can do without that information. Okay, so what we're going to look at is when the light goes through all of this and hits those sacs containing pigment, what are the sequence of events that results in the action potentials being initiated in these cells of the sensory neuron? That's what we need to know. Okay, and remember this is going to be part of the response that eventually results. So don't forget your pupil reflex, light, okay, uh, central nervous system, brain, or you know the relay neurons, when, when, the, when the impulses come back out down the effector is going to result in a response that might include the radial muscles or the circular muscles contracting in, in, that, in that case that would be the response okay so we're really looking focusing in on that pupil reflex that's one way to think about it